Welcome to Decoding CTO Case uh, 28. I'm Dr. Sharat, Interventional Cardiologist, <coughs> Medicover Hospitals, Hyderabad. Today I'm bringing a case of knuckle wire in ambiguous course of right coronary artery CTO. Uh, my patient is a 54 year old male, uh, came with an unstable angina and echo revealed RWMA in right coronary territory uh, for which he was uh, uh, done with an yeah so angiogram done uh, revealed uh, uh, tight lesion in OM1 and uh, there is an intermediate lesion in uh, left anterior descending artery mostly this is his uh, culprit lesion for his non qma there is also epicardial coronaries which is filling right coronary artery and also it looks there is one septal collateral which is filling you know right coronary artery now this is again the epicardial collateral which is filling right coronary artery so we can see this is right coronary artery so which is tortuous you can see here and also the distal vessel appears to be tortuous uh, co in courts and you can see it's a very long CTO uh, which you can understand in uh, LAO injections of RCA and left system uh, which shows you know there is a long length uh, CTO so initial attempt was done outside uh, and in which you know they could uh, pass wires into CTO but uh, uh, it was abandoned since uh, operator was not clear about uh, you know the course of the Y. So uh, that's when patient came to us, you know, for further PCI. So this was uh, his uh, dual injection at the end of his first procedure, which revealed some contrast flow into the lesion site. Uh, but overall, you know, the wire ended only in the mid CTO. So this is anatomical gram. So of the patient, so there is a long CTO and there is an early PDA and it looks there is an ambiguous course and there is a septal collateral and epicardial collateral. Both collaterals were not looked uh, a good interventional collateral, uh, you know, for this patient. So coming to JCTO score, uh, long length and uh, there is a loop within the CTO and also it's a retrilation overall score is 3 <clears throat> so the challenge in this case is basically the course of the vessel whether the course of the CTO segment is like this or like this you know straight segment or like this so this is the challenge it appeared like this you know the upper loop and uh, we really don't know where we have to turn our anti-grade uh, Y to enter into the, this part of uh, you know, uh, CTO. Uh, that's a whole problem. So to look into wiring strategy, yes, there is a good proximal cap, you know, we can start anti-grade wire escalation. Uh, but the problem is uh, his uh, distal vessel is also clear, but the problem is course is ambiguous. So when course is ambiguous, I think we can use a knuckle wire to do um, a course or we can also use a, a retrograde uh, wire as a marker you know, to navigate your anti-grade wire if needed. So challenges in this case, as I already mentioned, touch was right coronary artery. You can use guide extensions to you, you know do anti-grade wire escalation as well as to send IOS catheter inside and also when you are using ADR it prevents you know uh, intramural hematoma. Uh, ambiguous course of course you know you can overcome by using a knuckle wire and uh, small distal vessel uh, if ADR is used is a bit challenge in this case and always make sure you know you should stop knuckle wire at least 10 min millimeters before distal cap uh, not to spoil your re-entry zone <clears throat> so this is what we started so anti-grade wire escalation was done after placing you know microcatheter in front of uh, proximal cap so you can see this is a Gaia 2 and Gaia 2 is 
just out of the vessel you can see the movement of the wire you see the movement of wire here and see the movement of wire there is a disynchronous movement when compared to the wire within the vessel so that says wire is outside right coronary artery and also you can see in retrograde induction so this is a distal cap or distal vessel so tip of the wire is farther away from the distal cap or distal vessel so uh, you can see this is how the mostly course is but uh, it's very difficult to decipher where you have to turn the wire here so that's a major challenge you know in this case probably to some extent you know overlapping CT would help uh, in such uh, patient scenarios and then we went uh, to retrograde but unfortunately uh, uh, septal collateral was uh, not crossable we were not successful in crossing septal collaterals as well as you know, epicardial collaterals because epicardial collateral was too small to you know navigate microcatheter across so that's when again we came back to anti-grade and the option is only anti-grade dissection re-entry so then what's the plan for anti-grade dissection re-entry in this case so the first i mean this is most likely the course of the vessel so the most important thing is just use a knuckle wire only to cross over this segment of uh, you know cto and end a knuckle wire at least 10 millimeters beyond 5 to 10 millimeters from the distal vessel or distal cap to keep this zone as a you know uh, dry zone and not to allow intramural hematoma spoil your re-entry zone. So this is a zone of uh, you know separation from re-entry to your knuckle wire end and this zone again you know we can come back to anti-grade wire escalation that is Gaia 2 and do a directed tracking and sometimes you know you may go into trollium and if you're not going into trollium and you can do a dry re-entry and uh, uh, complete the case. So that was a plan. <coughs> so uh, this is a ADR. You can see you know, this is a knuckle wire with Wheeler XTR. So how it is going? You can also uh, appreciate the tortuosity within the right coronary artery. So and always uh, advance uh, you know your microcatheter to the uh, tip of uh, your knuckle wire. Follow knuckle with microcatheter. Never advance knuckle without following it with microcatheter. So that's what we did. Uh, further knuckle progressed here, and then a further progress of knuckle here. So despite some resistance, we could advance knuckle beyond. So you can see this is the course of the vessel, which is like a uh, C loop here. So, and we crossed entire loop and once the knuckle course is coaxial with the distal vessel, that's where, you know, we stopped our knuckle. So you can appreciate here. So we stopped our knuckle here. So, and from here you can see the vessel is basically very coaxial. So, and when that's what it is. So once you know the course is straight, you can stop knuckle and you can move on to your anti-grade uh, escalated wire that is Gaia 2. You can see this is Gaia 2 which we are traversing the straight segment and with further uh, advancement we could reach you know this little true lumen with Gaia 2 and advance microcatheter then de-escalated back to a work hearts wire. You can see this is a work hearts wire which is going into multiple branches distally which confirms that you know we are in true lumen so the immediate next step should be you know sending a guide extension you can see here advance a guide extension till the proximal cap this prevents expansion of intramural hematoma uh, because of the knuckle wire so that's very very important to protect uh, you know the distal flow into all branches and this also helps in sending you know i was catheter across in such a tortuous vessel 
uh, it's very difficult to advance uh, Iowa's catheter without having a guideliner across the tortuosity. So it facilitates your IVUS, and IVUS is paramount, you know, uh, to uh, uh, do you know your further stunting because we can't give any anti-grade injections uh, as uh, we did knuckling, uh, which may spoil, you know, or which may progress your hydrodissection and spoil flow into your distal territories. So this is IVUS, you know, you can see here. Um, yeah, from PLVB. So we are in Trulumen here, and you can see here there is a small, you know, compressed uh, lumen, you know, which you can make out around uh, three to six o'clock uh, here. So which is basically kind of, uh, you know, false lumen. You can see here, yes, here this is a false lumen, and also you can see, yeah, you can see here this is again a false lumen. So, sorry, this is a true lumen which is compressed. So here we are in false lumen. So knuckle uh, went into, you can see again, there is a true lumen which is compressed. So knuckle went from true to false. You can see here this is a true lumen. So true to uh, false and then mostly it came back to true lumen uh, either with anterior wire escalation or knuckle itself would have come back to true lumen. So Overall, it's a true to false and then to true lumen um, uh, in this case. So, It's a kind of re-entry, but re-entry happened mostly with a knuckle or with Gaia ward. So subsequently we completed stunting. So you can see this is uh, RCA at the beginning and uh, this is the RCA at the end of procedure. So a pristine result with a good stunt expansion and all the distal branches flow is preserved. So yeah. And this is a final IVUS, you can see, you know, uh, this is a distal reference 3.5 and this is a stunt expansion 6.3, 6.3. So we have a good stunt expansion. So learning points from this case is knuckle wire can be used to cross ambiguous CTO cords and knuckle wire at least, you know, 5 to 10 millimeters before distal cap or your re-entry zone. Switch to anti grade wire escalation after you know uh, knuckle wire is ended and use directed tracking of distal CTO segment for a dry re-entry. In this patient wire went this into distal true lumen uh, without need for re-entry. Thank you. You can subscribe to our channel uh, interventional strategies to get updates on such cases in future. Thank you.